John Pollock and John Ramdean back with you. Not only is there a Bellator card this weekend, we also have the UFC on a rare Sunday night. It's going to feature Travis Brown taking on Derek Lewis in your heavyweight main event. And also of interest is Johnny Hendricks moving up to 185 pounds. I would say of this card, in particular, those top two fights have a lot of interest. I think Johnny Hendricks to me is the most interesting person on this card just to see how he adapts to this new weight class he looks strong in this fight it's suddenly wow it's a whole mm -hmm. new life for him a loss very different discussion that we have on monday yeah i mean he feels because of the the whole the iv thing that this is the best move for him to go up to 185 pounds but this isn't something new we've seen fighters that get into their 30s that decide to move up to a different weight class and again is he biting off more than he can chew but we i think a lot of people felt that we were saying that about oh, Calvin point. Gaston. He's not, he's not biting <laughs> he's, off he's more not, than he can chew. <laughs> exactly. But we look at the, the Calvin Gaslam fight. There were a lot of questions like, wait a second. Calvin Gaslam's not that big. He's going to go up to a division where there's Jacques Array and there's Joel Romero and Michael Bisping and Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva's huge. The guy's fought at light heavyweight before. And look what he did to Tim Kennedy. He wrecked Tim Kennedy. You know, so when you, you look at that, maybe this is the best thing for Johnny Hendricks. He spent a lifetime of understanding how to cut weight. It didn't work for him at, at 170 pounds. Maybe because things have changed. We know how Zasada has changed things. I don't know how that's affected uh, Johnny Hendricks. But... If 170 pounds isn't working for him, you know, let's let's see what he doesn't have to win this fight at 185 pounds. He just has to go and look good against Hector Lombard because again, Hector Lombard he can take you out with one punch. The guy's very very talented, but again, that's it. we're talking about his natural weight class too. So it really depends on the outcome. What can Johnny Hendricks? bring to the table at 185 pounds. And we know that Johnny Hendricks has that knockout power as well, but that's not something we've seen from him, and especially his last number of fights. His output has, has not been all that high, especially against Neil Magny. You saw him certainly focusing a lot on his wrestling. I don't know if that's going to be uh, successful against a guy like Hector Lombard. I mean, when you're talking about a guy who has competed at the highest level of judo, that, that's a tall task if you're just planning to take this guy down. It's a very interesting fight for those reasons. In the main event, uh, Travis Brown, uh, it was noted he is not going to have Edmund Tarverdian in his corner, which is interesting. He'll have Ricky Lundell and Ray Cepho cornering him. This is a big fight for Travis Brown. This was someone who was on the cusp of a title opportunity when he lost the first time to Fabrizio Verdum. And against Derek Lewis, he's had a, a good win streak in his last five fights that he's put together. But I feel um, above Roy Nelson, above Gabriel Gonzaga, I think this is the toughest task for Derek Lewis, even in 2017. And uh, Travis Brown has an opportunity to, as well, like Johnny Hendricks, reverse his fortune. Uh, you nailed it. I mean, it's impressive what Derek Lewis has done. But Roy Nelson, I, I feel that Travis Brown, if, if those guys fought, you can imagine, based on physicality and based on experience, the guys that Travis Brown's losing to, look who they are. I'm talking about Fabrizio Verdun and Cain Velasquez. These are guys that were recently the heavyweight champions of the world. And right now, when the, with the division looking the way that it looks, you go out and you take out, Trav uh, take out Derek Lewis in impressive form, again, you skip the line and you become a part of that title conversation. If you can win two, maybe three fights, would you really be surprised if Travis Brown was fighting for a championship this time last year? They were, all, year? They were also in a, in a bit of a, they had a difficulty here when they lost Junior Dos Santos and Stefan Struve when Struve was hurt. That was the original main event here for Halifax, and they had to kind of scramble for a new main event. They got Travis Brown and Derek Lewis, uh, but not full, full camps for, for either of these guys. And, you know, some fighters have now started to bring this up. Derek Brunson being the most recent when he took, ended up fighting Robert Whitaker. That was originally a three-round fight, then accepts to make it a five-round fight. Now, it only lasted one, so it didn't really matter. But I'm curious how many more fighters, when they're going to save these cards and can't have a full camp, I don't understand why it's such a necessity on the UFC side that it has to be a five-round yeah. main event when you can't get in a, a full camp. I mean, that's a that's a big difference when you're training for five rounds versus three rounds. Sure. Because that's uh, imagine Derek Lewis. If this were a three-round fight, I think that it's much more favorable for him than a five-round fight. Yeah, I agree. And if you're Conor McGregor, and if you're George St. Pierre, and if you're Michael Bisping, you can tell the UFC those things. I mean, those guys are main eventers. They're going to be cha in championship fights. So you have that clout. When you see that the UFC just got rid of 100 fighters on their roster, do you really want to ruffle anybody's feathers? It's like, oh, this isn't ideal. But if I say something, I don't want to be on the chopping block. So conversely, though, if they look at you as someone that they can slot into a main event in sure. in a year yeah. where let's be to be fair, 
Artem Lobov is going to headline a card. Yeah, I mean, right. they are in short supply of fighters that can be put in main event positions. And they looked at Travis Brown and Derek Lewis, and those were two guys that they felt confident they could headline a card. I, and with. again, I, I don't know how many people are dying to see this fight. It's a heavyweight fight. If this was on a pay-per-view, the first or second fight, sure. Yep. But this is a main event. Are you going to get a lot of people tuning into this Halifax card for that main event when it was supposed to be the former heavyweight champion, Junior DeSantos, taking on Stefan Struve in that rematch? I don't know how many people are desperate to see this fight. It's heavyweight, so we have a feeling that there's going to be an interesting outcome. But again, it's not one of the, this fight card isn't one that is capturing everybody's imaginations. Uh, also on this card, we have a number of Canadian prospects, the biggest Amen. being Eamon Zahabi, yeah. who will finally make his UFC debut. Uh, the 29-year-old, all first round stoppages in his, in his uh, pro career. And also Gavin Tucker, an undefeated Canadian prospect on this card. I think those are the two we're, we're focusing on. Gavin Tucker will fight Sam Cecilia. That's an intriguing fight. And Eamon Zahabi will be taking on Reginaldo Vieira. You've been following Eamon right since his career began. Yeah, I, I actually like all these fights. And I like the fight with my buddy Alex Ricci taking on Paul Felder because because Ricci's got that tie boxing background. Paul Felder's got that tie boxing background. I feel that could be the sleeper <laughs> fight of the night. Exactly. And especially Alex Ricci has been spending time training in Las Vegas with Angelo Reyes and Frank Mir. And they they really seem to have a different mindset. And what the, one of the things that we've seen from Alex Ricci is he's so talented, but he hasn't pulled the trigger. And we all feel that anybody that's followed him and, and know who he is, feel that uh, his best performances are still ahead best performances are really still ahead of him where Eamon Zahabi th this guy if you've talked to him his confidence is through the roof he has a, a, a real understanding of the game he works with some of the best fighters in the world because a TriStar facility has open door policy so you can come from all over the world to come and get work with Warren McDonald and George St. Pierre and all the guys that uh, call that uh, gym in Montreal a home and Eamon Zahabi was built from the ground up with these guys so I'm very very excited because He's just, he seems to be a different type of fighter with that new technology, and he believes that he loves this pressure, and that's when he's going to perform the best. A lot of intriguing fights on this card in Halifax. We'll be running through it next week as we head into the weekend.